On the show in wheel spin, we drive the soon to be launched Mercedes CLA 45 AMG. In wheel spin, we get in behind the wheels of the Volkswagen Polo race car. And in wheel spin, we ride the Triumph Storm. I am here in Stuttgart, which is considered to be the home of Mercedes-Benz. And what do you think I am doing here? Obviously, driving a Mercedes. And what I have with me is the brand new car for India, the Mercedes CLA 45. And not only CLA 45, but it also carries the tag AMG, which means that if you happen to open the bonnet, you will find that this is full of horses. In other words, when you step on the gas, when you drive this car, you will be not short of brake horsepower. The CLA is one of the first compact sedans from Mercedes-Benz and it will be positioned below the existing C-Class, which at one time had been dubbed the baby Mercedes. But times are changing and the need for compact sedans are growing globally and more so in countries like India. So Mercedes is plugging the need gap here with this beautifully crafted machine, which is small and compact, but at the same time a proper sedan with four doors and a boot as well. The CLA 45 is what is going to be Mercedes India's big bang launch this year. The company is still not telling us clearly as to what exactly the month they are going to launch it. But my guess is it will be done sometimes around the middle of this year. And what do you get with the launch of the CLA 45? What you get simply is a sedan which is really nicely made. It's compact, it's small, it's short. Where's the Mercedes badge which means that it brings you impeccable build quality. The interiors in typically Mercedes fashion are well crafted and reek of luxury and top notch finish. And the CLA might be a compact but it doesn't really lack luxury and the AMG trim is replete with typical AMG flamboyants and draped in red pipings for the upholstery as well as shiny chrome garnishings. The regular CLA might lack all these and come in a more regular color and trim but in terms of features it won't be short. What the AMG badging has done to this car is very simple. It means excitement, right from this red seat belt to what is under the bonnet. The engine churns out about 360 brake horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque. And in a car which is this size, that should mean plenty of action. And there are plenty of indications of the AMG badging. Paddle shift, a steering wheel which is shaped like a Formula One car, a small gear shift lever, and obviously all the gizmos that you associate with a car, which means performance, including aluminum pedals. When you put in an AMG produced engine in any car, it becomes a joy to drive. And this CLA is no different. It's fast and the throaty exhaust makes it sound all the more. And the engine is mated to a 7-speed automatic transmission, which has the option of a sports mode as well as a manual to help a keen driver get the best out of it. It also comes with a Mercedes 4MATIC or what practically is the all-wheel drive to ensure optimum usage of the torque which comes out of this powerful engine and help the car maintain a good balance and grip even when pushed to the limit. What the CLA 45 will do to car buyers in India is simple. It will add to the sedan range and give you a whole lot more choice. Obviously, with the Mercedes badge, it's not going to be cheap. But what will certainly make this car a bit cheaper is when they launch it without the AMG trimming. And that means this will be a fairly affordable sedan as compared to any other luxury car that is available in India.
which way you look at this CLA 45, it looks gorgeous. And it comes as no surprise that Mercedes plans to launch the AMG trim first. And what it should do is whip up passion for this extremely good-looking car. With decent performance as well, and that's a good way to brand a car initially. Needless to say, the AMG trim will be priced much higher. But then eventually, when the regular variant is launched, you should be able to buy this car, hopefully at a price substantially below the existing C-Class. And this should make it an attractive proposition for people aspiring for a prestige brand at a somewhat affordable price. Expect the CLA 45 AMG to be launched in the second half of this year and with its launch the company would have launched another AMG batch product to ensure that the performance quotient of the brand rubs on to its customers. I told you the CLA 45 will come with the AMG badging. The AMG badging obviously means a lot of excitement and will pack in a lot of punch. But don't forget, excitement and power cost money. Many of us are familiar with this badge. We've seen it on a car that looks like this. Yes, this is the Volkswagen Polo. It's a great hatchback. It drives really well, feels very solid, German engineering and all of that. But honestly, I think that the one over there is a lot more tempting. Just one glance and you can easily tell that this is a racier version of the Polo. I mean, look at it. It's got all its racing bits in place. The wide body sports kit, the big fat tires, a nice bright paint job and of course, every boy racer's dream, a big fat spoiler sticking out the back of the roof. But actually, there's a lot more going on here that meets the eye. This car comes with a racing suspension with adjustable anti-roll bars. And of course, this particular car has a bigger and a much more powerful engine. You see, this one has a 1.4 TSI engine as compared to the 1.2 TSI that is found on the normal Ford GT over here. Needless to say, it produces a lot more horsepower. This particular 1.4 TSI unit produces about 180 brake horsepower and about 250 newton meters of torque. Accompanying this particular engine is a 6-speed DSG as opposed to the 7-speed DSG that you get on the Polo over here. They say it's quicker, they say it's faster, much more responsive, but we'll only get to know that once we head it out on the track. Now once you're on the inside of the car, it becomes abundantly clear. This is a proper, proper race car. You see, look at the carpets. There's nothing there. It's all been taken away. The door pads at the back, gone. The seat at the back, gone. Everything's been replaced by bare metal. 
Also, the biggest thing that you'll find is this FIA spec roll cage over here. Even the FIA spec proper racing seat that you've got here. It's even got a six-point harness, which basically keeps the driver in place so that when he's actually pushing it car through the limits, he stays glued in place and doesn't really move around. Now, the dash itself, if you see here, everything's gone. There's no climate control, there's no air conditioning, there's nothing. Just a quick ignition switch, something to set off the fire extinguisher in case there's a fire on board. The steering wheel itself, well, it's a three-spoke racing wheel that you've got at your hands over here. And behind the wheel is an interesting LCD display. Now, this basically obstructs the view of the driver from the other uh, instrument console over here, but you don't really need it because everything that the driver wants to know while he's driving is displayed over here. Now, this little box not only records and displays the data of all the vital statistics of the car, for example, what the speed is, what the RPM meter is saying, what the temperature is, and even the shift lights. It's got these neat little LED lights that roll across the top over here and tell the driver exactly when to change the gear. And there's also a display to tell the driver which gear he is in. Now, all this information is stored over here. This can then be taken out from this particular system, downloaded onto a computer, where the driver and his race engineer can basically study all that data and find out exactly how the driver was driving, at which point did he brake early, which point did he brake late, where he accelerated a little too slowly. Now all these things are downloaded onto the computer and then the race engineer helps the driver understand how exactly he was driving. Now all this is very impressive and honestly I'm, I'm blown away and a little bit shaking even as to how this car is actually going to behave. Now before you can actually get inside the racing car, you've got to be dressed right for the occasion. After a couple of reconnaissance laps, you just begin to realize how much grip there is in this car. I mean, there is a lot of mechanical grip and of course, there is a lot of grip that is there because of these tires. Now these racing slick tires, they're actually really, really good. Another thing that excites the senses is the sound from the free flow exhaust system at the back of this car. It just urges you to push the engine higher up the rev range because the louder it gets, the better it sounds. We know that the engine is tuned to produce 180 brake horsepower, but it's the urgency with which the power is delivered and that just puts a big smile on your face. Especially when you're heading down the long straight at the Kari Speedway, the numbers keep climbing, 180, 190, almost 200 kilometers per hour before the 50 meter board comes into view, hard on the brakes and the fantastic brakes just slow the car down from 200 to 60 kilometers per hour in just a short distance. The steering response itself is very sharp. It gets a power steering all right, but the feedback, I mean, that's essential for any racing driver, it's just fabulous. Cars that they give the drivers to drive are actually proper race cars. It's not just a souped up polo as anyone would think, it's actually a proper race car. The techniques that they adopt to train the drivers as to how to become better drivers, as to how to compete in the higher formula, I think they're spot on. They've got the right tools, they've got the right attitude, and of course, they've got the right cars. Motorcycle manufacturer Triumph came into India. 
then didn't exactly come in empty handed. Instead, to make their intentions for the Indian market quite clear, they brought in their entire range of motorcycles, starting from the quite likable Bonneville to the biggest ever production bike made, the 2300cc rocket, and sandwich in between other bikes like the Daytona, which is a sports bike, and this delectable cruiser, the Storm. And this is going to be my ride for the day. Triumph came into India late last year and created a huge interest among bikers with their range of products. But it is the Storm which might be of great interest as this is a proper cruiser and with attractive styling as well. The Storm was born for the open roads and endless hours in the highway spent in joy. As this machine is easy to ride with a comfortable riding position and power on call at the twist of a throttle. The Storm is a cruiser, then it looks the part too. It's big, it's powerful and it looks macho. And what really makes the bike stand out is this large teardrop shaped tank here and the twin oval headlamps here. This gives the bike a standalone look and one glance and you know this is the Triumph Storm heading your way. In terms of ergonomics, the Storm is quite easy to ride. The saddle height is quite low, the handle is big and this provides quite a nice riding position and all the controls here are within easy reach. But what I really don't like is the instrumentation cluster here which is placed on the tank in true cruiser style. What this does is that while you are riding, you have to really take your eyes off the road to look into this and this I don't think is a very safe thing to do. The instrumentation here never actually lets you forget that you're riding a British bike because it gives out the speed readings in miles. Thankfully, it also gives you a corresponding kilometer reading as well. So that's fine with me. But what really makes me uncomfortable in this bike is this, the pillion seat. Not only it looks like an add-on, but it's too thin, it's too narrow. And if you really have to carry a pillion on this, end of the day, I think he or she will be a very unhappy one. The engine is mated to a 7-speed gearbox with one down and five up shifting pattern. And what goes for the gearbox is that shifts are easy and smooth and it's possible to find the neutral position without much fuss. The Storm here is powered by a relatively big 1.7-litre parallel twin which churns out a very healthy 97 brake horsepower. But where the Storm really scores is in terms of the torque. It punches out 156 newton meters of torque and this is very evident the moment you start riding it. One little twist of the throttle and you are greeted by a delightful burst of torque which easily propels the bike to the three digit mark. In spite of its size, the Storm is quite nimble and easy to ride and the riding position is also very comfortable. What this new generation of Storm gets is ABS. So the stopping is as effective and as efficient as riding it. The Storm rides on 19-inch tires for the front, while for the rear, the 17-inch wide tires provide enough traction. And the twin adjustable Showa shock absorbers do a splendid job of absorbing the bumps and ensuring that the bike remains settled even while going over the rough. The twin disc brakes do a very competent job in terms of stopping the bike. have in mind is long distance highway riding then the storm should fit the bill perfectly this is a bike which is very big but in spite of its size it's quite nimble and plenty of low end torque ensures that she makes light work of the stop and go city traffic and on the highway and easy riding position plenty of power makes it a delight The 
storm is priced at rupees 13 lakhs ex showroom which isn't cheap but then most imports cost about this much and triumph is building up a dealership network in india and by the end of this year it should have around seven dealerships covering most of the metros so if you are in and around the metro service as well as acquiring one should not be a problem Triumph Storm will be up against some formidable competition like the Harley Davidson Road King and the Heritage Softail along with Japanese cruisers like the Suzuki Intruder. But my guess is that it will stack up well with its easy to ride attitude and looks that stand out. Overall, the Storm will be a valuable addition to the cruiser range in India and should become a favorite of many riders who want to do long distance cross country riding. Over the last 41 weeks, we have been bringing you one exciting episode after another of Top Speed. And I certainly hope that you enjoyed watching it as much as we did making it. But now it's time for us to take a short summer break. And we will be back exactly in five weeks with season two on July 12th. And you can rest assured that we will have some very exciting automotive stories lined up for you. Till then, you take care, drive safely and of course, miss us.